This is by far the best Madden game I have ever seen. The storyline, everything, it's just about to get over, and we are going to break it down for you here uh, after the game. Henry gets a pick, seals the W, but there is so much going on in this game. We have to get into this film room. So uh, Wesley playing Henry, winner of this, wins the first ever Madden, um, the Madden ring for winning Madden Bowl. And if Henry wins... He actually is going to be the first ever player to cross a million dollars. Now, ultimately, <laughs> you already saw the ending, but as you can see, uh, this game is, if he wins this game, he gets, I think, $250,000. So he goes over a million dollars. Now, he's playing Wesley, and Wesley is no slouch himself. I think he's the second highest earning player of all time. Yes, he is. And these two have history. If you think about the uh, the um the event that kind of launched Henry's career um, as a Madden player, it was his game against Wesley in the Madden 22 Madden Bowl, in which really um, didn't win handily. And um, honestly, that game could have gone either way. So Wesley is getting in the situation here where he is going for revenge. Super, super excited to do this for you guys. Wanted to get this out here as soon as possible. We'll do another one later on where we get a little bit more in-depth with the schemes and stuff. Uh, both of these guys are rocking the Colts playbook. And then on offense, and both of them on uh, defense, I think, are rocking Chiefs. Now, uh, Henry was going to this combo a lot. I will break this down. This is a short side uh, bunch combo. We have not seen this all year. I believe this is the play curl flat in the Colts bunch. Essentially, we're going to get a double corner route here to the right side. And then on the back side of this, we have a little shallow cross uh, or drag post combo. And if we look at Wesley's defense here, he's in dollar. And here we get a DB fire two, blitz, blitz, blitz. And we basically get a roll coverage right here. And let's take a look. And there you see, pretty good. Hits this route. And that's the power of set feet lead. Now, both of these guys rocking Doug Williams at quarterback, hot route master, and uh, set feet lead, of course, gunslinger, I'm sure. And the dots, X Factor, probably mirroring. Uh, both these guys basically doing the same stuff. It just comes down to who's going to be better execution uh, wise. So, ball in 39, left hash mark here. Uh, Henry's going to go to a bomb play. Love this route combo. This is out of wide trail. Uh, we have our little drag, we have our little trail route, and we have this little ghost route to the back. So the beauty of this is that there's not a yellow zone. The running back will be wide open as a check down, and then we have that potential for that post to get over the top if Wesley is playing cover two. As you see right here, running back is open now. He gets kind of a disengage off a send three look, and the post is going to be open if Henry has time. But Henry, unfortunately, you see here this drift, with this drift, I don't know if this is spy or what, but somehow he gets into this line of kind of this grass area. You would basically have to check it down here or just throw the ball away to be safe. Henry ends up choosing to uh, throw the ball away. Now, I am having some trouble with my, my, uh, my voice, so uh, please forgive me. But again, we just want to get this out as quickly as possible. So second down and 10. And let's see here. We're going to curl flat again. This is this should be double corner to the tight end. We're wide side. Let's see if he shows the play art. Let's see. Yep. Okay. Perfect. So this is the mo one of the most meta route combos out of bunch. We broke this down in our bunch ebook on the Patreon. We broke this down on YouTube. This is a really really good combo. This is out of the play curl flat. So now that we're wide side again, just want to point that out. This is the Colts version of the double corner. We have a tight end apprentice short corner, and then we have this deeper corner this deeper corner can get over the top of 30 yard uh, basically any kind of cover two to the right side because of this clear out streak right here so pro progression wise we're really looking for this we're, we're going to peak this we're going to peak this but we're really looking for this or we're looking for this over here on the left hand side so we'll see what wesley does defensively okay so he sends four so right now, we can throw that to the left once he clears this little pocket. You see right now this is open right here, or we can wait on this and try to hit this over here. It depends on if the user goes here or the user goes to the right. You see how he goes to the right? Right now you gotta throw the drag, but he is a step behind. Henry sees that, and he's able to take his primary read, which is the corner route. 
great read. Another thing to quickly point out is you will see a lot of blue passing. Um, the blue passing is uh, something that David T. basically mastered early on in the year. And it's really something that late in the year, a lot of these pros are trying to add to their own game. Essentially, uh, blue passing is perfect accuracy. If you get a blue pass, you'll never get an inaccurate. Love this play call here. This is out of first and 10. This is one of Henry's favorite plays. Um, probably one of his most called plays of the tournament. You're going to get dagger, which is basically a Y cross play, the practically way it works out. It's a Y cross play with a clear out fade. So off of the snap, we're going to look. This is the user. If the user comes over here, and if this guy goes here, we're going to see, and we're going to peek this space. If the space is available, then we can throw the ball right here. If not, then we'll turn to these three as our primary read progression and a high low to the right side. So you see here, automatically users takes a step this way. This guy takes a step this way. Look at all of this green grass right here. Henry sees it perfectly, hits it quickly. And it's really one of the reasons why um, this, this, uh, this is such a good, such a good uh, play. Love this play. All right. So now we have a red zone situation, uh, ball on about the 20 yard line. Henry's gonna go to this play. This is a very popular play. This has been something that has been, um, oops, apologize for that guys. Uh, this has been something that's been true of next gen Madden for quite some time. So I wanna talk about what's going on. So it's a short side bunch setup. It's out of Z spot and go. When you motion this little glitchy route out, he's gonna, when he takes his setter and he gets up field, he can pull a third to the middle of the field. When he does that, this corner can be thrown in that little pocket over there. And then on the back side, probably just have a little check down read in case we don't like what we see. We're primarily looking for the corner. So you see here, we just get a little flat, probably a little drag. But I want you to watch this. So this guy right here is in a cloud. This guy's in a half. So he has the corner. The corner will be open here, but he gets the pressure from Wesley. And I think we actually went with a, a C route in a wheel, uh, which is basically just trying to attack sideline. Henry got a lot of unfortunate breaks this game, in my opinion. Um, and that is one of them. He got, like, several intentional groundings on throwaways. So, uh, to me, he actually overcame situations like this a ton, which is, again, just speaks to his mental fortitude as a Madden player, I feel like. Uh, here we go to double post. What we're really looking for is the C route. We're going to try to use this wheel purpose of the wheel is this guy, if he's in any zone, if he's on the third, if he's in a half, if he's in a quarter, he's going to get cleared out. So the only zone that can play this C route is a specific type of uh, cloud flat. And then you'll see here now, Wesley ultimately is kind of expecting this. And we actually get Wesley Sin 3 really performed well, as you see here, or Sin 4, I guess, gets screamed out right up the A gap. And here, I mean, <laughs> it's actually a great read. He's trying to throw this little check down and uh, just gets just gets absolutely screamed at. Okay? So it brings up a third down and 20. So in this situation, really what you're trying to do is you're trying to pick up the first down or at least give yourself a fourth and manageable. It's not a great position to be in on your first drive, but I love this play call. This is Speed Dig, and he uses a Slot Apprentice Crosser and essentially what we're going to do is we're going to run this almost like dagger because this is going to kind of be that super wide in route. And he's going to try to throw this right here. He could throw this over in this pocket. And obviously we have a clear out. Now the purpose of the tight end corner, I'm not 100% sure. It might just be to try to get the user to go out here. Or if he does get a, you know, a, a zone, then maybe he has something for that. We see here, um, basically, we have a third, we have a third, we have a half, and we have a, a cloud. So it looks, appears to me like Wesley is anticipating like a double corner or something to that right side and trying to take this away, this window away. Now, his user here is actually really interesting, but basically, his user is going to full commit to this, which is kind of surprising. So you see, if you just watch his user, look at this. Now, this is thrown with great anticipation of Henry. And again, it just speaks to really just the composure under pressure, I feel like, because if you're throwing this ball right here, this this defender is kind of like, I mean, it, <laughs> this is a risky throw, but he has set feet lead. 
He has lab this, of course, for this situation. And this is just an absolute, absolute dart. Uh, you see, look at the throw off anticipation. And then, I mean, that is just perfection. That is why he is the number one Madden player in the world, the number one Madden player of all time. Um, no, I, I don't know that anyone will ever come close to surpassing the accomplishments he has had. This, this is actually incredible. Um, what, that conversion right there was just absolutely incredible. Okay, so I want to talk about this play. Um, this is clearly a red zone scheme at a wing slot week. So basically, if this is a hard flat, we could throw this back in here. But really, the other thing we're looking for is to throw this in the back of the end zone with this. Because what do most people do out of 6-1? Well, you get a cloud, you get a hook curl, you get a hook curl, you get a cloud, and you get the user. So if this guy comes down in a cloud flat, there's a little window right there to hit that uh, triangle route. So we'll snap this ball. Okay, what do we get? Well, in this case, we actually get a vertical hook and a purple. Primary reason might be to try to stop a corner. Same thing. We get a yellow. We get a purple. We get a cloud. And so the user chooses to take this, this window away. So what Henry does is he just throws it right into that window and is absolutely perfection. Able to get seven on his first drive. And really a drive that he probably should have gotten stopped on, uh, if we're being honest. So... All right, we're going to get into Wesley's first drive here. Now, we're doing this over the live broadcast, so obviously we're going to do a little more fast-forwarding. He ran the ball first play. This is his favorite play. This is his favorite play in Madden. Literally, I did breakdowns on this. He calls this all the time. So what we're looking for, we call this with our bunch to the wide side. The purpose of this is this running back wheel will clear out any outside third, outside quarter over there on the right. And then you can throw that corner right there. Now you're going to need time. So the plan ultimately is to make this read here uh, quick. And we're really looking at that pocket there. And we're really looking for this linebacker. If this linebacker blitzes, then typically what's going to happen is this guy's going to go in a third. So the window that becomes wide open to throw into is really right there. Okay. So that's kind of what Wesley's looking for here. So we'll snap it. Okay, so Henry sends this guy, sends this guy. He sends a lot of pressure here. Now, what you're going to see is he does this a lot this game, but he drops this guy into a little yellow zone because he's anticipating that he can pick this tight end post off, but he can also get there before the pressure is able to get there. Now we get a third. We get a third. We probably have a third here, basically, uh, playing cover three coverage. And then we have a... Um, hard flat to take away this this instant flat here. So from a user perspective, Henry actually jumps on to this guy, and he's going to kind of bail back into this throwing lane, and Wesley ultimately has to throw the ball away. I felt like this might be one of the best uh, defensive games we've ever seen Henry play in an offensive Madden, which is ultimately why we're going to do a lot of breakdowns on this game and really try to dive into the defense because this was incredible. Now you might ask, why is DB Fire, why is DB Fire looking so good off the edge when he's blocking a running back? The reason why is because most pass protections require you to double team, as you see right here, double team one of the defensive linemen. That's the meta way to pick up the A gap. So because Henry knows that, this blitz becomes significantly more effective. This is ultimately why Dollar is once again just the best defense. It has the most amount of blitzing options. You can have slot corner pressure. You can have A-gap pressure. You can have crossfire pressure. So here we get DB Fire 2. It's almost, literally, it's, it's basically stock DB Fire. Basically stock DB Fire. Probably shaded this guy underneath and then clouded these guys on the outside. As you see, this is just really good defense. It appears like he's throwing that read. That's not open, but it's open kind of thing. He was able to hit it. He's actually able to get a first down out of that. Probably, to me, should have been... I don't know. I don't know that it should have been a first down. It probably should be fourth and one, fourth and two, which is what Henry's really trying to do, is just make Wesley have to work. So here again, DB fire two. The other thing you're seeing a lot is he's going to lurk on this guy. So he's going to kind of make contact, and then he's going to bail back into coverage to, again, steal a player in defensive coverage here. Okay, we get this shaded down hook curl here. So we have a really nice send five. 
And then obviously we're bailing out with our user. Now on this uh, particular, we get a hard flat, we get a third, and we get that guy in a, we get that guy in a third. So again, we have third, third, it might be a quarter, but it's probably a third. Hook curl that's shaded underneath, blitz, 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 hard flat, and then the user is able to, if there's a double corner, he's gonna go to the double corner. If there's a deep crosser, he's probably gonna go to the deep crosser. Pretty much standard, so you see here, Again, look at the bumping of this. This is actually really interesting. Look at all of this congestion that you're getting uh, as this, and this is one of the really underrated elements of how you defend formations like Bunch Strong Nasty. You try to, you try to basically um, constrain the space the receivers have to work with. One of the ways you can do that is through sending pressure at it because when you're in this compressed set, it's kind of hard to beat the blitz. Wesley goes for the same bomb Henry's going for. He's not going to have time, but here, I don't know that Henry, this guy, this yellow did not play more. I, I'd like to see this yellow play a little more down here for whatever reason he didn't. And so, I mean, he's trying to, and actually you're going to get a KO right there. So from an ability perspective, uh, this is really important when you play Colts. If you're playing someone that running uh, Colts playbook, you want to have a mid zone KO on this defender and a deep end zone KO on this defender. That's really, really important. Uh, in my opinion. Here, this is becoming a more popular uh, little, uh, what I'd call constraint route combo. If you start seeing that hook and that third, obviously there's nobody guarding the immediate flat. So you see, he bails back. This is a good adjustment by Wesley, able to just take what the defense gives him. And he is able to get some easy yardage. All right. First and 10, ball on about 47. Now this is uh, Wesley's probably second most called play uh, in the tournament. It's dagger. Again, we talked about it. I think this is Henry's favorite play. It's basically the Bunch Strong Nasty's version of Y Cross. The beauty of this hook curl is he will play the snap throw streak. This is I actually use the same adjustment against Kib a lot when I played him running Colts. Middle third, middle third, quarter. We're going to probably, and this is my opinion, I trust this quarter to play this crosser. Um, more times than not, I just don't want to give up these two routes. I want to force you to have to make the hardest throw, which is over the hook curl. You're going to have to throw this in a really tight window. And this is, again, why I love the hook curl adjustment over here on the left-hand side. We're sending pressure, so it's going to... Dagger takes a long time to develop. It's not really good against Blitz, and the Blitz gets home. And now we're in a second 16. I mean, you already see in the first drive, like, Henry's playing really good defense. And um, he's going to go to it again here. You see, now we're only sending three. Um, don't I don't know about uh, situationally. Maybe that's just a situational play call from Henry. He probably was anticipating something a little different. Here we get a man up on that clear out streak, and we get we basically get some different types of man ups. We get B manned up or circle manned up, square manned up. So now at this point right here, who's the obvious person for him to use her? He needs to go back roll, and he's doing that. He's rolling back. This is a great user because our man up here takes this away. That takes this away. This hook curl is really doing a good job against the tight end. So we're just kind of rolling back here. And you see now, right? <laughs> that's a good, uh, and that's why this is a good route combo, but he's able to hit the tight end and uh, keep the ball moving down the field. Hmm. All right, so here uh, Wesley goes to double corner. Uh, again, watch this little in route and watch this hook curl just rob it. Look at this. This is just fantastic. If you if you want to steal a good adjustment sequence for this formation, this right here, if you want to play coverage, and then obviously you could blitz this guy and have no flat defender. But this shaded down yellow is so good against this formation. Uh, it really is. So you see here now, I think Henry actually uh, made, made a mistake. I think what he meant to do, because he's been doing this most of the game, I'm pretty sure he's doing this out of free safety zone blitz. Uh, he might not be. He might be doing this out of cover two press, actually, because he's because he wants it to look the same as DB fire two. So he's probably doing this out of cover two press. I don't know if he is, because I don't know what he's doing out of it. Basically, this guy is in a yellow. He should be in a middle third, and I'm not really sure why. Um, I just don't know why Henry... Maybe that was a situational thing. We wanted our shaded down yellows. We wanted our hard flats. Uh, and then we wanted to basically user become a middle third. 
But here, I feel like it's just an undis. Like at this point right here, you got to know that comp. I mean, when you see three, when they all run straight, this is really a, a pro tip. When everybody on the right side runs straight, it's probably not going to be three streaks, right? So what's it going to be? What's well, going to be streak? Uh, whoops. It's going to, I don't know why it's doing that. I'd love to be able to draw. It's going to be streak, corner, corner, streak. So they're running vertical, running vertical, and then they're going boom, boom. Every single, pretty much every single time. I don't know of any route combination where they go like this, right? I mean, I, I guess like this, but but in general, where does your user responsibility? You've got to take that away. You got if you got nothing there. So it just feels like a little bit of a, a little bit of a bad user here. He kind of gets stuck here. I think he was anticipating the tight end post because when Henry or when Wesley gets in this situation, he almost always calls that rollout play. Uh, what we've seen. Anyway, he ends up hitting the streak, and yeah, kind of honestly like. After a really hard drive, I feel like that was kind of a free seven. Um, I, I mean, Henry's got to be frustrated with that. But anywho, he gets ball back. And not terrible field position. Now, four minutes, 34 seconds. Important to point out that Wesley will get ball at half. Uh, so that's also kind of important. He loves this curl flat play. Now we're going to see tight end corner. This is going to be double or triple corner. Not triple corner, double corner, probably. No, actually, double post. It's really so fascinating to me how how much less people are calling um, double post specifically, as well as how much people are really the main game is being played in in this formation right here. This is the either this or the one out of Jets. These are the two best offenses. Bubble screen runs the ball, jukes out of there. And almost scores, and this is where um, this is this is probably Henry's worst moment of this game, in my opinion. But he's going to go back to his his quote unquote red zone formation, right? He goes this in the red zone. This is his this is his scheme. He's going to try to run this power, really try to jam it up here. But good user by Wesley. It's just hard to run on six one. It's what makes six one really a good red zone defense. So now we're in a second goal situation. Three minutes and 20 seconds. And Henry goes to the air here. And he goes to a different combo than he did last time. He goes to this little, basically, uh, mesh concept. And essentially the thought process is probably we're going to hit this uh, slant probably right in here. Or we're going to hit this over in here. Okay. So it's basically, a, to a degree, it's like a, a shallow cross. And again, this is almost ran like this is probably a smart routed post. So it's a drag post or a shallow. Anyway, the point is, as you're looking at this picture, what is open? Well, we know this is going to get covered by this, right? This is dead. This on the left is dead. So really, we're reading here. Now, if the user... And, and basically, Henry's, if the user carries with the triangle, you might have this really tight window right, and you would have to throw it literally right here. You would have to throw the ball right here, which is an incredibly difficult. So really, at this point, the play is kind of dead. Henry might have thought, oh, he's going to roll back here, and this would have been open, but he basically makes a guess read, and he guesses wrong, and it's a huge, huge turnover for Henry in that situation uh, absolutely huge absolutely huge so and like i said i think that was really henry's worst uh moment of the game now what's really impressive here is wesley is absolutely wesley is absolutely set up to to basically clock this out like absolutely set up perfectly and the other thing that's kind of um Important to note about this game is Wesley was running the ball surprisingly well, like like better than normal out of a passing formation. So he was able to really run the ball well in this game. Now here we get a little RPO, as you see. Um, I don't know why that happened there. But anyway, uh, we get a little RPO. Now it brings up a third down and one. And he's going to take it to the two-minute warning. 
Because, again, Wesley's plan is basically because he gets balled half, it's okay for Wesley to get a field goal on this drive and still be uh, pretty much like in good shape. Gets, a, again, another good run from Wesley. You just see this a lot. And I think it might be because Henry was running a lot of DB fire. But, yeah, just, just I mean, not really able to stop the run. So here, this is kind of his send everybody defense. But, again, he's lurking right in here. And you saw this, the I mean, you saw this, this, this lurk right here, very much so the majority of the game that he did this. Anyway, hook curl right here, he throws this. This has to be a KO in my opinion. Um, and you get this really nice animation. Again, it almost looks like this was not shaded underneath to me. But um, yeah, I mean, that's just a bad, that's a, it's just really bad. Uh, the mid zone KO should have KO'd there and it didn't. See right there, that's where I say it looks like free safety because he, he instantly kind of comes down like this. So he's got to be in free safety zone blitz. Um, so here's your yellow. Again, you've got this guy in the middle third. That's why it's so interesting to me that this guy was in a hook crew on the touchdown. But anyway, yellow here. F uh, zone, zone. Another really interesting thing. Henry does not put this slot corner. He does not back him up much. He's leaving him jammed up, and he's sending him a lot. So you see here again, one, two, three, four, five but then he's bailing out with his user. So kind of an interesting little tweak on uh, the most popular defense of the game. Again, you get a hard flat from this linebacker, and then you've got a shaded down yellow here, and then basically Henry is really looking for the double corner, or he's looking probably for dagger in terms of how he users. There you see, that's why mid zone, mid zone KO is so good. And I mean, this is a really, really good defense that Henry's lapped up. And it's basically the same adjustments. It's really the same adjustments majority of the game. Um, I mean, not not one-to-one, -one, but like really the best defense he's played is when that guy's coming down in the hook curl. Uh, here we get a kind of an interesting combo. And Henry, I think, Henry is also really good at guessing right. But he flats this guy, third, third, uh, flat, flat, and then cloud. So what Henry's anticipating is a coverage setup. And he's also kind of anticipating that uh, Wesley might be running double corner here. And what you see is basically, this is again, one of his go-to plays. He's got the wheel, but we have the purple out here. It's gonna be hard to hit this window. So all Henry has to use her is X, but Henry kind of just dart. I mean, I guess he does have to use her that corner. Uh, so he ends up going here. The tight end is open, but again, this is a KO. He's in, in the midst of a rollout. And we're able to, he's able to kind of get out of it and probably should have lost more yardage there than he actually ended up losing. All right, so now we're in a third and 13 situation. Guess what? Hook curl, third, third, third. This is probably a man up. It might be a hard flat, but situationally, if he's expecting double corner, this would probably be a man up. It would make sense for that. So here we go. I think this actually ends up being double post. So this is definitely a man up. He mans up the tight end, uh, which takes away a lot of different things. And then this right here is the play of the game, in my opinion. A lot of times when you're running double post, this crosser would pull a, a third. But I, I bet you here, I don't know. It, it seems like, oh, actually, this was two interceptions. Okay. So... I'm just not sure what Wesley's seeing here and what he knows that I don't. It basically looks like he was thinking the C route would pull this third and he could throw this over top for a big play. This right here, to me, is an interception. Look at this throw. This is an interception. <laughs> and he's able to kind of cut it off, and it ends up not even being a KO. So again, and you see Henry's facials expressions i mean it's just it's to me that was a terrible terrible read it's one of the many reasons why i don't like the colts offense because you think you i think the colts offense makes you do stuff like that um a lot but anyways back in the send five now when he stays in regular bunch this is pretty much always a man up so you see here man up it looks like actually no hard flat okay i lied but now we're gonna go right back to the same basic thing so what's what's wesley what's his thought process He's probably thinking, okay, well, if he's going to play the crosser, then I can throw this C route. The problem is where he snapped the ball, in my opinion. 
Um, and I'm not sure if that's the only thing, but short side, this crosser is not over there. This crosser would need to be over here for him to impact this, this defender. Anyway, you see this with no clear out. He throws this, and it is, I mean, this has been a throw that a lot of people have made this year, but I just feel like that in this situation, it's just not open enough and with all of the beef, with all of the, the really good players. As you see, this is a pick six. This is crazy to me that he threw that in that situation. Ah, I mean, he had to really believe that was open, but I just think as you watch the tape back, it's pretty obvious that – that was kind of a bad read. And, and again, obviously I understand like pass leads and all that probably uh, end up mattering a little bit more. He was trying to get a little more bend to the sideline, all that. But anyway, big time momentum shift because Henry Henry just, the one mistake Henry made just got erased. And here Wesley rolls out, gets a, a, a red pass. Now I said this watching this game while I was watching this game, I was thinking, had this been – had this been like, had there been like two more minutes in the second quarter, I think the game would have ended right here. And the reason why is because Henry is on his neck. Uh, you see this defense. I mean, this is cagey. Uh, absolutely, just. T I mean, he just starts to absolutely lock in on on Wesley's uh, tendencies, and you just see incredible defense uh, on those next couple plays. And it just kind of goes to show why. Uh, Henry, the thing that makes Henry special, I think, uh, in terms of his Madden game, and he would tell you too, is his defense. His defense is just his defense always keeps him in games. So here we get a hard flat. We get a third. We get a third. Now again, what did I say? Henry's user is going to do. He's on this guy. He's coming here. If he sees tight end go to the corner, he's basically usering the tight end. Honestly, just practically speaking. But if he sees tight end go to the corner, he's going to go to the corner here. So you should see this. See, he sees tight end go to the corner. He takes it, and for some reason, Wesley throws this. This is never open, this corner. Um, it's just not open, and I'm not really sure why he threw it. To me, this is an interception, and I just, uh, I mean, I guess he boxes him out. That's a pick artist pick. I mean, you just watch this, and you're like, oh, my gosh. It, it could have been um, it could have been worse than it ended up being. Anyway, so Wesley ends up punting the ball here. Uh, nothing really too much to show. We're, we're, I just want to get us right to the second half. Um, basically, Henry returns it, and he does not get a touchdown. So, uh, Wesley is going to get ball out of half. So, uh, this is kind of a must score, in my opinion, for, for Wesley. He needs to go down and get seven. The entire momentum of the game right now, if you think about it, halftime was actually super helpful for Wesley because... Again, the momentum is all on Henry's side. So here we're going to send one, two. So see, the other thing, too, just the different blitzes. We've seen DB fire. We've seen uh, we've seen this send five. We've seen a send five where we're lurking on this guy here. Uh, so just kind of different defenses and really interesting. But um, here we get double post, a little flat, nice read, and uh, able to get out of there. And, and and you see the second half. I feel like Wesley truly did um, just just got very fortunate on some of the animations. Maybe not every animation, but some of them for sure. So here Wesley's going to a bomb. Um, we get this is almost like a bluff bluff. I don't know what this is here. My oh, I think he was manned up on the running back. That's probably what it was. Anyway, this is just standard DB fire two, and. He ends up, this this is low-key, low he'll go to this, and it just absolutely, as a mix-in, was really good for him. It really was. There, the beauty of the way most of the route combos play in this game, if you just randomly call DB Fire 2, not only does it mess with the blitzes better, um, because if they're double-teaming this guy, DB Fire 2 comes off the edge a lot, but it also, um, it just it depends on the route combo, but you can really bag with that. So here we get a send 5 or send 4, um, no, we send, we send five, but again, now we're lurking here. So, uh, we have the shaded down yellow. So this right here, you can't throw really. If you throw that, that's a KO. And really this is just double corner. So again, Henry's tracking the tight end. Tight end goes to the corner. He throws this to me. This should be a KO every time he catches it in stride and he's able to get yardage. And that's where you see some of the, you know, the, the major, uh, value and shading underneath on that, on that hook curl. 
And I feel like this right here, another play where Wesley uh, should have been stopped. So this is basically, it looks appear, it appears to me this is Henry's like short yardage defense. He's going to have a hook curl. He's going to have a hook curl. He's going to have a hard flat, hard flat, and he is going to be in the middle of the field. It's a very aggressive and then probably has these outside thirds is basically what it appears to me to be. So you see these guys, he's probably even protecting the sticks, but these guys come right down to the first down marker and they take away really a lot of stuff here. You really can't throw the ball underneath in any of these windows. And then you have a chance to KO it with these outside thirds. This is really nice defense, honestly, and something I'm definitely going to add to my game. And then he's going to send some heat out of it. Now here, the other thing that he does, it's underrated, is he gets a bluff blitz. So he sends three uh, through the A-gap, right? And then this guy is in a bluff blitz, and that three wreck normally will sit right in this little pocket. So you have a yellow here. You have three yellows and a hard flat. You have five underneath coverage, and then you have uh, your, your, your outside third. So as you look at this picture, what is what is going to be open? We know this right here on the right is completely dead. So as this play runs... You might be able to throw this right here, but this guy, he's, got, he's coming down right in that window. This three wreck is right here. This guy is going to eventually pick this guy up. What is really open here as you look at this play, and then Henry just knows, I just have to use her this. He's obviously anticipating this play call. What we, what we want to happen is this three wreck, and combined with this yellow here, we need this these two zones to play this one player. And for some reason, I think he sends this guy but he ends up sending this guy and look at this look at this zone this is you have <laughs> this is just a, a, to me like look at this throw oh and they're both KOs they're both mid zone KOs and they just can't make the play that's pretty bad to me again another situation where i feel like wesley could have easily been stopped here uh, this is a throw that I tried to make against in the game against Kiv a lot out of a uh, bunch strong and it's just not a throw you can make this year uh, not at least not very often. So basically the idea would be this guy's in a hard flat. So now look at the grass. As it appears, this is all open, but we have this defender running on a, on a line right into the zone, and he has deep zone KO. So because of that, you'll see here he throws right here. He has to high throw because of the user. So he's throwing in a really tight window, and watch this. It looks like it's open, right? But the KO, and it's not going to be open. That is, um, that is another reason to me why cover three, shell, middle zones, uh, they're really, really effective. This should be a DB5 or two call, but I don't know if he'll do it. Okay, so yeah, really aggressive defense here. He's actually going to send one, two, three, four, five. He's, he's sending five. Uh, it appears, I don't know what this zone is. Um, it, it could be a shaded down. I don't know for sure what this is. Might be a QB spy. But we basically get um, like a little soft squat. We get a man up here. We get a little soft squat here at a half. So this is double post. So what does Henry have to do? This might even be a mid-read shaded underneath. But Henry just needs to go take the post route, which is where he's on his way to. You get the blitzer coming around. And again, like great pocket from Wesley stepping up, able to get a couple yards, make something out of nothing, and put himself in a good position to get a third down. But as you see this whole drive... Henry's defense is playing very well. He's he's really um, he really is in good situations. I don't know if you can bluff blitz this guy, but it seems like that's what it, this is. It almost seems like this is a bluff blitz so that he can get a three wreck. I'm just not sure, uh, but it, without seeing his play art, but it's basically the same defense that we just saw. It runs the same basic, de literally almost identical. And you see here again, KO. Just mm, I mean, you see the facial expression. Like, we understand that that's a possession catch, but would really like a KO right there. But first and goal, all is not lost. Henry gets a chance to play some red zone defense, which is really, um, I think, probably one of the better ways to get stops in this game. It's really hard to score in the red zone this year with all the KOs and stuff. Able to stop the run. Wesley's going to go to this little red zone uh, play that he labbed up. I love Henry's adjustments. Uh, down here in the red zone. So basically the idea is if this is a cloud flat, if we put a hitch on the numbers, a lot of times the cloud will suck to this uh, area and we can really kind of try to target here. Because of this though, the mid zone KO, 
you'll notice that what Wesley does is, and I'm not even sure what, this has to be a deep half, but for whatever reason, uh, Wesley high points this because he's trying to make sure it gets over the top of this defender. So he high points it, which is going to cause an animation from this tight end where he's going to have to jump up. As you see here, he's going to have to jump up, which allows this KO time to catch up and end up KOing the ball. Uh, and that's a huge play because, I mean, right there, I mean, that, if that, he gets seven, all of a sudden, you know, we're basically back to a, a similar momentum-wise game. Now, third and goal, Henry ends up making the decision here uh, to blitz. And I want to note something. Notice here that his line is not spread. He's not spread his line or pinched, I'm sorry. I don't think he's pinched his line here. So because of that, it's a dead giveaway. We're going to send everybody. John Beast did this in his game against Wesley. Okay, literally every time they were spread, he was blitzing everybody. Wesley ends up choosing to send five out. Well, we know we're getting hook curl, hook curl. We're getting cloud. We're getting cloud with our user really kind of lurking in here. I mean, there's just nowhere to go. Uh, this is just ends up being, I think, perfect defense. He actually does man up the slot receiver, but um, really, really, really nice defense. Ends up holding Wesley to three. And now it's like, okay, well, he survived the potential momentum swing coming out of half. And really, Henry has all the momentum on his side now in this situation. And somehow on this drive, he just absolutely, uh, I just feel like this is, and this is Henry's thing. Like, it, if, he, if he had any weakness, it's really stuff like this. Like, it's first and 10. It's first and 10. If you go get seven on this drive, the game is effectively over. Like, literally, that's how that's how fast these games are. That's how critical every possession is. If Henry goes get seven, he knows this, okay? And then we'll look, at, look at what we do. I mean, it's just interesting to me why. Like, okay, I understand the run here. Why do we run here? Well, we want to get the clock moving. We want to get on a hash. Well, he stays in the middle of the field. So, <laughs> so the whole purpose of the run was to get on a hash mark. And he doesn't get on a hash mark. So now we're in the middle of the field on the second and seven on a on a drive that again this is a put away drive. He goes to this combo. I actually like this play call. Um, what I don't like, as you'll see here, is whoops. I don't know why it's doing this. That's weird. I don't know why it's doing this? Huh? That's not cool. Let's get back to that play. So da 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 da. We're back here just a little ways. Maybe if I can get to it. All right. So he goes to the run on first down, and then he goes to this um, He goes to smash return, which I actually really like the play call. And Wesley does end up playing. you got to give Wesley some credit here. He plays perfect defense for the situation. Um, so he did anticipate this play call. And the reason I, you know he anticipated this play call is because, well, I mean, I don't know for sure if he anticipated but he has this yellow here. So we know... Now, we get this bump, and the pressure doesn't help everything also. So that's I understand that. Um, the lurk is going to come back here to this backside route. So now at this point, once you see this guy turn here, and again, I know we're slowing this down and all that, but this is the read. The problem is this right here. So what I don't understand is if we roll out here and throw this ball away, why we're not able to do that, but maybe he was just getting screamed out a little too fast. And he ends up getting intentional grounding. To me, that is terrible. Like you cannot. Uh, it's just, it's just, it just hurts him a lot. Uh, the third and twenty hurts him a lot. And then he goes to this, and I don't know. Uh, just, it's just, it's just surprising. Like this was his like kind of play that he labbed up, where he's got curl flat with a slot apprentice corner. I would assume what he's thinking is that this corner gets underneath a third, but. In this situation, the only read here is we can throw this. And I've seen a lot of times where this is a dive down possession catch animation. And I think he just gets a bad animation here. And as you see, he ends up getting in a fourth and 20 situation. I just, I don't know that I love that specific play call. But I think what Henry was probably thinking is if I don't get the first down, I'm going to punt the ball back. Because um, he doesn't really hesitate to punt. I think he just – it just was a really bad um, sequence. And I think some of it was play calling. Some of it was execution. Some of it was Wesley played probably the best defense of his Madden career 
on that drive. So, I mean, you know, you got to give him some credit too. First and 10 goes to, and, and now we're back defensively here. Uh, so this is the Trips defense. Uh, what Henry does, Henry ends up doing against Trips is playing basically a send three, and we just have a lot of different zones. Uh, this is an inside quarter here, and it appears that this inside, I don't know why we're doing that instead of a middle third, but uh, we're really trying to, you, you don't want that to be open. I just feel like when, not sure the, not sure that the adjustments I don't know. Maybe he thought he had match on. I'm not sure. Just kind of interesting. All right, back to this. So Wesley starts going to some of the plays that we've seen a little more from the tournament. Dagger uh, drags going to be open late. Ends up throwing the crosser, and he catches it. Um, to me, that's a you know I, I I honestly and we know like that about this Madden that if you catch the ball on the sideline, it's potentially going to be white. Like you're going to catch the ball, but I actually feel like that. If I if I want you to throw something on dagger, I want you to throw the crosser because a lot of times I just feel like that crosser is very difficult to throw. So I'd rather you throw that. Uh, this is an interesting route combination here. We get a streak, we get a little return, and then we get a little smash return corner. What we're trying to do is we're trying to pull this cloud inward so that we can throw this uh, corner on the outside. Now, great little cross man from Henry, which is pretty much one of the things you've seen him do a lot. This is terrible to me. Uh, this this right here is absolutely terrible. Look at this. So he's he's past the line of scrimmage. He throws the ball. When this happens in game, what what basically happens is the the players essentially they they freeze. So let's get back to this um, here if I can if I can get back to it. Anyway, long story short, <laughs> uh, he ends up it ends up not costing Wesley like it should. Uh, to me, like almost nine times out of 10, that's an interception over there on this play. And it's normally like Henry would just decline the penalty, right? I mean, this is just, uh, <laughs> I mean, you see the facial expression. I mean, it's just terrible to me that, 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 and then right after that, this actually, and you have to, again, we don't see everything here, but right after this, I just feel like. Uh, I mean, we're in the middle of the field. It's kind of an awkward play, uh, but basically we get flat, flat, a little yellow. We're going to lurk, and then I just don't know what his user guards. I guess his user takes this, and I don't feel like uh, – I just mm, – I didn't I didn't love that. Uh, didn't love that defense. Anyway, he ends up getting in for – ends up getting in for seven, and this is where the game just goes absolutely crazy to me. So far, I mean, everything has come, you know, not, nothing's really come easy. And then all of a sudden, they just start going off. This was kind of very similar to the, the what happened in the Madden 22 Bowl. But Henry ends up hitting Wesley with the play that Wesley ran uh, against him. This is X under, I believe. It's got this crosser, little motion streak. This pulls the half. And that's a really nice pass. He's out of there for seven. You could not ask for more from Henry on that because now Wesley cannot clock him out of the game. And so Wesley's going to have to go down and score. So in this situation, Henry's in a pretty advantageous spot. You just have to basically make this drive take a little bit of time, and you'll be in a position, Henry, to either go down and tie the game with a field goal or to be able to go down and score. Well, the very first play, and I talked about it, Wesley has had some ability with the run, and <laughs> he just gets out of there for seven. I mean, that's just, mm, I mean, talk about not <laughs> uh, not ideal. Not ideal for Henry because now, again, if Henry takes too much time here, then Wesley is given the ball back with time to clock Henry out. So uh, this was probably, in my opinion, uh, one of the best drives Henry had all tournament, maybe of his entire Madden career. Um, he's had so many marquee drives. This one, really good. So he's trying to get this because he's trying to get the bomb here. So he doesn't get it. So he ends up throwing the ball away. I wish that would stop doing that. Uh, so he ends up throwing the ball away. So that's going to bring us to second down. And he's motioning out. I don't know what the – I would assume this was just to try to get this bomb a little bit more open here. He ends up reneging on it, motion the running back back into the backfield, goes with a little ghost route, and this is pretty much all underneath routes. And it's actually – people don't realize how good of a route combo this is. This is really cool. Uh, but basically, we're looking to throw that drag here. 
We're looking to throw this right in here. This is a, a hundred percent. I mean, he literally makes the entire field a triangle. A uh, really, really cool route combo for zone. As you see, running backs open, flats open, and I, I, I'm definitely lurking that combo. That's a really cool one. I love that uh, little triangle uh, combo there. Now he runs the ball, able to get out of there, get up field. Now, uh, really, really smart here. What Henry does, this is super important. So he gets out. Okay, so you have a choice. You can try to juke back in and make a play, or you can try to keep it wide and understand that if you get out of bounds when you're in the fourth quarter, this, this clock stops. He's trying to save as much time as possible. So what he does is he just stays wide, runs out. It's actually a super, super smart decision. And a lot of people would just, you know, never even really notice that. Uh, so anyway, first and 10, uh, ball in midfield. Again here, what's he trying to do? He's trying to score fast. So he's going to bomb plays. Again, he gets out of bounds. That's important. It's really, really important uh, that he gets out of bounds there. And uh, first and 10. Again, there's not a whole lot of clock being taken, which is really important about this drive from Henry. So ball on the 39-yard line. Close to dagger probably or double corner. This is probably double corner. Okay, yes, he does go to double corner. I don't know, interesting. He, he, he's using his flat, so the user has to go here. He ends up getting this cloud. I'm not sure what this zone is. I think that's a third. So this is, ends up being just really good defense from Wesley. Uh, you can't really throw that against an outside third. This guy is going to get taken. The only read really is this over the top of that. So really good defense from Wesley. Ends up getting screamed at. Got to throw the ball away. Thankfully, we didn't get an intentional grounding uh, penalty this time. And that's going to bring up a second down and 10. Ball on the 39-yard line. Short side bunch, potentially double corner here. Again, this is one of his favorite combos. And we really didn't um, – we really hadn't seen this specific combo ran this way before this tournament. But the main thing he's looking for here is, again, this is heavy sideline. So running back wheel is going to clear out the third. We're going to try to throw the C route over here, possession catch it, and get out of bounds. Or we're going to try to throw this corner, possession catch it, get out of bounds. So we're just trying to play to the sidelines in general. And he's able to hit the C route, get out of bounds. It's hard to guard both of those routes this year, um, the C route and the double corner simultaneously. First and 10, ball on the 14-yard line. It goes back to this combo. Now, right here, I want to highlight something uh, that you'll see. So he does not end up smart routing this route. I think that might have made a little bit of a difference in terms of how this route runs. What ends up happening is this is open. So right here, it's open, but you saw it get a little bumped right there. Because he got a little bumped, it's not going to run flat to the corner like Henry expects it. So he throws it like that, and it's kind of a scary, um, but it's, it was actually not a bad read. It was really just the route ran poorly, and I feel like, I don't know if he smart routed that or not or if that made a difference. Um, anyway, goes to this. He's trying to hit that corner. Again, please look at the clock. He's only, I think, used 50 seconds to get this ball down the field. So that's probably the most impress impressive thing about this. He goes to this combo, and honestly, this is one of his staple red zone plays. Uh, and you got to kind of know he's going to this because he's already ran everything else. So uh, what I don't understand is what Wesley's user ends up doing here. But basically, all Wesley's user has to do is take the tight end away. And for some reason, he, he bites back on the slant. Well, the yellow zone's right here to take this away. So, I mean, I don't know. But he bites back just for a second. Tight end's open. And Henry's in business again, four minutes. So now we get into this really interesting situation um, where you have to make a decision if you're Wesley of do you try to clock the game um, or do you try to score quick? And he ends up choosing um, to try to clock the game. Now, I think the reason he does that is ultimately because he's down by four. And he doesn't want to give Henry a chance Um it's just too easy for Henry to go down and get a field goal. So I think what Wesley's truly thinking is I'm going to score with like less than 30 seconds on the clock. So we're going to see a lot of runs here. Again, just trying to work the clock. He ends up throwing the bubble. You don't see – you really have not seen a lot of uh, – in Comp Madden recently, a lot of bubble screens. Uh, as much as they call them, lately it's been a lot of I'm just going to hand the ball off. Uh, but here – there you saw a little bubble screen here again. 
uh, good defense. And Henry's trying to go for the strip. But now we're about midfield, and this is where things start to kind of heat up. A close smash return. This is second and six. And uh, let's go through this. So, again, what's Henry's defense that he loves to play in these situations? He loves this defense right here with his user on top. We'll see if he goes to that defense. It might be something different. Actually, a little safer. So we have a half. Uh, we have, I'm not sure. This this looks like a quarter, um, but it might be a half, honestly. And, uh, yeah, pretty pretty still pretty tight and aggressive defense situation. Uh, I think he probably, again, in those situations, a lot of people call that smash return setup. So good on Henry for anticipating that play call. Third and seven. He goes to this, and I actually am shocked. Um, okay, so this combo is not a bad combo, but Henry ends up playing really good defense for it. He's sending three. He's going to lurk out, okay? He's got the tight end. Um, he's got this little vert hook here, so or this little zone here. So the tight end post, or the tight end is dead. So all Henry has to do is he has to take this post for long enough and then basically come back underneath and take the angle. So he takes the post, he's going back to the angle, and then there he just gets a little low with his user, as you see, facial expression, and uh, Wesley is able to complete it. I feel like he had it, kind of had him there, especially on a fourth and, or I think that was a third down. All right, so here, uh, Wesley, back to the RPO, not open. And then basically Henry just needs to hold in the red zone. If Henry holds in the red zone, he wins. It's really that simple here. Um, Wesley has to score now. The way he clocked the game, he has to score. So makes a makes a bad, uh, not a bad read, but really not the best read. And, and now we're going to this. This is the play. This is the play he has ran literally all tournament. This guy's either on a flat or he's on a drag. All right? So this, this is the play. And we're really looking for this corner on a rollout action. So what we get here, Henry ends up sending three, okay? Now, uh, the really important thing that he does is he mans up circle. So he that man up of circle, and this should have been intercepted, honestly. That man up of circle, what that does, what this man up of circle is going to do is it's just going to hold the ball. He's going to have to hold it a little longer, and, and partially of that, I think they were just a little close to the red zone. That route just did not end up getting as much of a clear out from the running back as it normally does. So here, fourth down in 10. This a got to have it down. Ball game on the line, 48 seconds. If Henry gets a stop here, he's the Madam Millionaire. If Wesley, if Wesley scores or gets a first down, he's got a chance to win his first belt. He is known as the best Madden player that has never won a belt for a reason, and you will see that here. So we go. he ends up calling this. Uh, double post setup. So what does Henry do? Well, and of course, for some reason, the uh, YouTube thing is, is buggy. So love that we ruined it with showing the interception. So here we go. Uh, backs off this. He, so late Henry backs off this cloud flat. All right. So we get a cloud flat here. You get a cloud flat here. He sends one, two, three, four, five. And honestly, literally for the bread, it's basically DB Fire 2, almost stock. I mean, almost stock. It's just we just have these clouds right here. So you can't throw that. That right there is dead. The user is able to take this away. Half takes this, and the cloud is sitting right here. The only read that can be thrown is this. So Wesley, to a degree, makes the right read. I guess you could try to high point this or high point freeform this. Again, it's just really honestly a bad play call, in my opinion. Um, there's just not a lot of like throwable routes and every single fourth down situation. We've seen some kind of variation of, uh, two cloud flats or two hard, like two flats at the sticks and two yellows at the sticks. So kind of a, just surprising. Anyway, he throws this ends up getting picked. And really from there, as you see, Henry goes crazy. He's done it. Mad and millionaire, best player of all time, Wesley, Absolutely defeat, frustrated with himself. Henry is losing his britches. That's it. That's the Madden Bowl. That's the finals. Henry, best Madden player of all time. Going to be doing some more breakdowns on him over the course of the next couple weeks. Got a lot of film to dive into. Wanted to get this out to you guys. Thanks for watching the video.